Outlook 64, a review of the nation's business and industry, and a look ahead into 1964. The United States enjoyed robust economic health in 1963. The gross national product, the total value of all goods and services, moved closer to the record $600 billion mark as business expansion moved through its third consecutive year. Profits reached new highs. Total employment and personal incomes were up too. Now, a report on six of this nation's most important industries and their prospects for 1964. 1963 has been an excellent year for the steel industry, with production up 10%. Strong sales of automobiles, appliances, and machinery, and a high level of construction helped make the past year the best for steel production since 1957. There were no major across-the-board steel price increases in 1963. But industry officials say that some selective increases brought prices back to the 1958 levels. Foreign competition continued, but the American steel industry countered with the introduction of new basic oxygen furnaces, computer-controlled facilities, and more efficient blast furnaces. This giant, put into operation at Ashland, Kentucky, late in 1963, is the largest blast furnace in the free world. Here, with a look into the new year, is Logan Johnston, president of Armco Steel Corporation. The steel industry is looking forward to further improvement in 1964. Most steel using industries will be very active, bringing a strong demand for steel. As for profits, we hope they will be good too. However, our industry is battling rising costs and a mounting tide of steel from foreign mills, mills with modern equipment and very low wage scale. We are meeting these problems with stepped up research new facilities, and new products. Our scientists are developing many new steels, steels that do more jobs better. And we are spending a billion dollars a year for new equipment to keep our industry modern and progressive and to better serve the needs of our nation. The steel industry's best customer in 1963 was the automobile industry. More automobiles than people were born in the United States, as the automakers built a record 7,300,000 cars in the model year to pace the American economy. Early sales of 1964 models have also been strong. The interstate highway system continued to grow in 1963. By the end of the year, more than 15,000 miles of the new road network had been built, providing further stimulation for automobile ownership. The first turbine engines developed for use in passenger cars were introduced in 1963. Several turbine vehicles were put into operation late in the year. Now, with some thoughts about 1964 and the future of the auto industry, Lynn Townsend, president of Chrysler Corporation. Those of us who build and sell automobiles look for another excellent year in 1964. In the last few months, people have been buying cars at a record rate. And for as far ahead as we can see, they are going to continue to put the heat on us to build enough cars. The rapid progress being made on our countrywide freeway system and the coming of age of the youngsters born after World War II will continue to keep the automobile industry very busy indeed for a long time to come. From our point of view in Detroit, the country is in excellent shape and the outlook will be even brighter with lower taxes for consumers and for business. When auto sales are high, tire sales are high too. And in 1963, a record total of 139 million tires were produced. The tire manufacturers spent millions of dollars in research and development to improve their products. Although the tire is the best known product of the rubber industry, the total value of some 40,000 other rubber products was greater than the value of tires in 1963. And the rubber industry is continuing its expansion and diversification efforts. Early in 1963, on this highway near Findlay, Ohio, rubber road materials were placed in strips across the pavement in a safety experiment. They produce loud drumming sounds, giving the driver the impression he is accelerating, and he reacts by slowing down. 
Now for a look into 1964, Raymond C. Firestone, president of the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company. We are looking forward to the biggest year in the history of the rubber industry in 1964 and steady sales increases for the rest of this decade. The industry should sell 141 million new tires next year. The 81 million cars, trucks, and tractors in use today will increase by several million next year and an estimated 15 million by 1970 creating a continually growing demand for tires and other automobile products made of rubber. Continued research efforts are making possible new and improved rubber products for the auto industry, the home, agriculture, and national defense, giving added confidence for 1964 and the future. The electronics industry grew rapidly in 1963. Revenues reached a record $15 billion, and electronic sales were up 9%. The National Defense Program and America's aerospace effort continued to provide the major market for electronics. Government expenditures represented 60% of total revenue. The past year also saw increased emphasis on micro-miniaturization, as industry researchers developed many new tiny electronic devices. The introduction of the laser was hailed as the most dramatic electronic development since the transistor. More and more computers came into use in 1963 to control operation of entire industrial plants, in office automation, and in the processing and keeping of records. What's ahead for electronics? Here with some predictions is James H. Binger, president of Honeywell. The electronics industry is looking forward to major gains in the year ahead, especially in business and industrial computers, industrial controls, miniature circuits, and color television. The nation's defense program requires more and more electronic equipment, and there are promising markets in space exploration. Electronics is just beginning to tap its potential as a vital and essential tool for industry, commerce, education, the farm, and the home. New products, new markets, and the pressing need for plant modernization should push electronic sales to another record in 1964. The chemical industry had another year of solid growth in 1963 with record sales of $35 billion. Profits were up too. As costs continued to climb, Chemical companies sought new ways to cut expenses, drop on productive items, and increase the profitability of established facilities. There was increased emphasis on chemical research activities. Approximately 30% of all American scientists were employed in chemical fields in the past year. The industry continued research in pesticides, pointing out that if properly applied according to directions, pesticides are of tremendous value to mankind. Plastics had vigorous growth in 1963 for the third consecutive year, as many new commercial uses were found for plastic materials. Agricultural chemicals, man-made fibers, and industrial chemicals also had good growth. Here now with a look ahead is Herbert D. Dome, president of the Dow Chemical Company. Continued growth and good health are the prospects for the American chemical industry in 1964. The past five years have been a period of readjustment for the chemical industry, the sometimes painful but essentially healthy result of increasing worldwide competition. In the future, I believe it will become clear that those with depth in research, production, and marketing know-how will enjoy the growth in profits expected of an industry with virtually unlimited opportunity. We in the chemical industry look forward to the year 1964 and beyond as a new opportunity to contribute to the growth of this nation and the world. During 1963, television as a form of mass communication reached new heights. More than 600 television stations transmitted news, entertainment, and educational programs. 
the telephone remained basic to personal communication. Americans made 300 million calls every day during the year. 250 million miles of telephone wire was in use, enough to stretch from the Earth to the moon 1,000 times. More than three and a half million new telephones were put into service as industry revenues topped the $11 billion mark. There was new emphasis on the use of telephone lines for transmission of business data and messages. Business machines literally talked to one another over long distances at speeds of 2,400 words per minute. And during 1963, several new American communication satellites were placed in space. With more on new developments, here is Donald C. Power, chairman of General Telephone and Electronics Corporation. 1964 will be another record-breaking year for the communications industry in terms of greater traffic, expanded facilities, and increased revenues. To prepare for the growing needs of the future, many new techniques of putting people in touch with one another are being developed. Electronic switching equipment will ultimately provide many new services. We are also experimenting with the use of light waves to carry conversations. The communication satellites orbiting the Earth at this very moment symbolize the unlimited future of the communication industry as we look for new and better ways of getting the right information to the right place at the right time. In summary, business in 1963 was excellent. And surveys show that the American consumer is entering the new year in a buying mood. New tax legislation should provide added momentum for the economy. Although unemployment remains a problem, business and industry are striving to retrain displaced workers and create new jobs. The nation was shocked by the death of President Kennedy, but the business community's first reaction to his successor, Lyndon Johnson, has been one of confidence. Early in 1964, the gross national product is expected to hit the record $600 billion rate, a milestone no nation has ever approached. And so, we enter the new year with optimism. <laughs>